uh, today. Last night, the uh, Public Service Alliance of Canada followed through with its strike deadline. And as a result of, uh, as of this morning, uh, over 100,000 members and five bargaining units are now in a legal strike position and can withdraw their services. Now, I can't stress enough how disappointing this is. Based on the progress we've made at the negotiating table, this is not where we should be. Over the past two weeks, we've been able to resolve a number of issues through mediation. And most importantly, we have put a fair, competitive wage offer on the table. We recognize and respect employees' rights to strike. But when a good offer is on the table and there is a genuine commitment to compromise, the focus should be on negotiation. The government has been waiting for almost a year for PSAC to come back to the table since our first offer so we can negotiate a deal with employees. Les fonctionnaires travaillent fort pour les Public servants work very hard for Canadians. This is why we have saved every bargaining opportunity to work in a constructive way to achieve agreements that equitably recognize contributions in our country. However, we cannot sign a blank check. Numerous PSAC demands are unrealistic, and some would have grave repercussions on our capacity to provide services to Canadians. We have to see to it that agreements be reasonable for taxpayers and respect our objectives, which is to serve Canadians. That is still our objective. I am convinced that we will be able to reach an agreement. The government employees a wage increase of 9% over three years. This fully matches the increase recommended by the Public Interest Commission. And all members of the commission endorse that increase, including the PSAC's nominee. We have also put forward proposals on a number of other priorities uh, for the PSAC, including remote work, increased shift and weekend premiums, and improved leave with pay for family-related responsibilities. We have no doubt that there is enough common ground to compromise and reach an agreement with the PSAC, and I'm convinced by working together, we can do so. To all federal public servants across the country who work hard every day, your work is valued by Canadians and by us. We will continue to work with the PSAC to reach agreements that are fair and competitive, but we cannot do that unless the union is prepared to compromise. We cannot write a blank check. To Canadians, we know that our strike poses unneeded challenges. We are committed to ensuring that essential services continue to be delivered. That said, after the union's announcements, many of the PSAC's members are away from their job on strike. It is not business as usual. This means that numerous services will not no longer be provided or delayed. And the colleagues who are here with me today will give you some examples of the services affected. We will continue to inform about these repercussions for as long as they last. Meantime, I would like to reassure Canadians that federal services that protect the safety of the public will continue to be ensured. To Canada.ca slash labor instructions to find out more about potential impacts on their services. And I want to say it again. We have made and continue to make every effort to reach a deal as soon as possible. We call on the PSAC to work with us to reach an agreement as quickly as possible. Public servants Merci beaucoup, Mona. Bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. 
Merci de me donner l'occasion de m'adresser à vous aujourd'hui. Tout d'abord, je veux souligner que notre gouvernement... I would like to underscore that our government values the important role played by the employees of Canada Revenue Agency everywhere in the country, giving services to Canadians, and especially the crucial role they paid during the pandemic. And you know, the members of the Public Service Alliance of Canada have exercised their right to strike and have given their union a mandate. This since last night, the uh, members of the Union of Taxation Employees decided to exercise their strike mandate as of today, much as uh, solutions continue to be sought at the bargaining table, we recognize the fundamental Fendel might right to strike. Now, the CRA uh, will continue, of course, to play its important role on behalf of government. And I'm thinking here of the young families that are relying on the uh, ch child benefits. And this is why the government had put into place uh, robust uh, measures to continue to help Canadian businesses in regard to any repercussions resulting from a Pour les autres prestations qui relèvent de l'agence, elles seront classées par ordre de priorité. Quant à la saison des impôts, je suis consciente que plusieurs personnes n'ont pas encore soumis leur déclaration de revenus à l'agence. Bien que la date limite du 1er mai ne bougera pas, l'agence continuera d'accepter les déclarations de revenus et la grande majorité de celles envoyées de façon électronique continueront d'être traitées automatiquement par le système et ce, the system without any additional delay. As to businesses, same thing. The treatment of T2s will be done automatically when they are sent electronically. Nonetheless, everything that re requires physical handling, paper forms, for instance, this may take more time. Same for call centers. There will be additional delays before you are able to speak to an agent. More information on real-time wait times will be made available on Canada.ca and continue to be updated on a regular basis as the situation evolves. If any other any circumstances uh, prevent a citizen or business to uh, take care of their tax responsibilities, uh, there could be uh, s s some redress in terms of penalties, and these requests shall need to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. I invite everyone to consult the agency's website for further detail. Lastly, I would like to point out that the agency continues to be in solution mode and is determined to sign an agreement that is fair for employees and reasonable for taxpayers, and this as soon as possible. I call on everyone to remain close to the bargaining table because that is where the best agreements can be reached. Thank you all. And now I'll give the floor to my colleague, Minister Gould, who will give more information on Canada services. Thank you, Minister Boutillier. I'd like to take some time to give an update on how the ongoing public service labour disruption will affect services delivered by ESDC and Service Canada. When a labour disruption takes place, it is incumbent upon the government to take the steps necessary to ensure Canadians can still access essential services. Pendant cette période, le gouvernement During this period, the government will make every effort to serve Canadians as quickly and as efficiently as possible, taking into account the reduction in resources and staff. Only those services deemed essential will be provided, and these are defined in the Act and stems from negotiations with the union. The Canada Pension Plan, OAS, and employment insurance, as well as granting social insurance numbers, are deemed to be essential services. Income supplement, employment insurance, and social insurance numbers are considered essential services. As these programs will be focused on maintaining client access to payments, Canadians should register for direct deposit to help get the payments they are entitled to quickly and easily. 
In-person and virtual services will be limited to clients requiring assistance with CPP, OAS, and EI, as well as the GIS and the issuance of SIN. However, during job actions, Canadians should expect delays. L'un des services clés. One of the key services that is not deemed to be totally essential is the passport service. The majority of Canadians will therefore not be able to apply for nor renew a passport. Pursuant to the Act, the delivery of passports is essential and a priority only in situations of urgency or humanitarian uh, need. And these services will only be offered in passport offices or Canada services uh, locations. Canadians will not be able to apply for or renew a passport. By law, passport services are essential and a priority only in emergency or humanitarian situations. These very limited services will only be available at passport offices or at Service Canada centres that are consolidated passport offices. Humanitarian and or emergency situations are defined as follows. Passport clients at risk of financial hardship, Passport clients who rely on travel as a source of employment and whose income security will be jeopardized without access. Passport clients who must travel for medical reasons or who have had a death or illness in the family and whose situation is deemed urgent. And passport clients deemed urgent on compassionate grounds. Les demandes de passeport. The requests for passports that do not meet this criteria will not be deemed essential and will not be processed do not meet these criteria, will not be considered essential, and will not be pro uh, processed. We do expect that a prolonged labour disruption would create a backlog of passport applications that would need to be processed once the disruption is over. Thanks to the capacity that we've built over the past year, we're in a much stronger position to address any new backlogs, but it wouldn't go away overnight. To paint a quick picture, we currently have a sustainable file inventory of about 160,000 10 or 20 day passport applications. We receive a total of about 85,000 a week and process a little more than that. The incoming and the outgoing are balanced. If we lose a week of processing time, tens of thousands of files in that inventory move out of service standard and become a backlog. And then we have to consider the number of applications we may receive but can't process during labour disruption. The longer we are in this position, the worse that problem becomes. It would take some time to resolve, but we are going into it in a stronger position than where we were last year, for example. We will continue to assess the situation carefully as the collective bargaining process unfolds. We remain confident that the interruption will be of uh, short duration and that we'll be uh, able to catch up on any backlogs. If we can to minimize impacts on Canadians and we will continue to monitor the situation closely and ensure that we provide the services and benefits as quickly and efficiently as possible. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Minister Fraser, to talk about his uh, department. Thank you, Karina, and thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Information on the anticipated impact of a labour disruption on the services offered by IRCC to clients uh, both in Canada and overseas. Uh, I'll start with the services that will uh, remain available for clients. Uh, at this time, uh, those using IRCC services will continue to be able to make applications online or by mail. They'll be able to continue to access an online account and there will be some access to uh, emergency services. Uh, services delivered by our partners as well will also continue. Uh, these include things such as visa application centers across the world and panel physician services and healthcare related services that are delivered here in Canada. Services delivered by settlement and resettlement organizations in Canada, including for government assisted refugees, uh, will still be offered. Uh, settlement services across the country will continue to make sure people have the support they need before, during and after their arrival in Canada. Government assisted refugees will continue to receive income support payments and we're going to continue to provide temporary accommodations for vulnerable group groups, including those, for example, who have recently fled the war in Ukraine. Uh, je, uh, je commence 
I would like to begin with the services that will remain available for clients and clients who can send in requests online or on their online account and access uh, the agency services. And our partner services will also be maintained. And these are for services online, those of our partner, and the health uh, services. So those provided by organizations in charge of a, a settlement in Canada, including for refugees, uh, will also be continued. Our IRCC that, that we do expect to see an impact on. As a result of the labor disruption, we would be at a significantly reduced capacity. Uh, clients should expect to experience serious delays with processing applications across all of our immigration streams. At any given point in time, uh, it's common for us to be managing uh, more than a million applications. Uh, this is a large number, and we have been working night and day over the past uh, year and a half uh, as we uh, uh, came into the post-pandemic phase uh, to reduce these backlogs. Uh, and we were getting very close to uh, restoring service standards across all of our lines of business uh, and, in fact, have hit those service standards we enjoyed pre-pandemic for many of them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the labour disruption will have an impact on the gains that we have made uh, and the work that we've been doing to address some of these backlogs in our inventories uh, since the pandemic. Uh, further, uh, delays could be experienced with citizenship services delivered admissions abroad. Uh, clients with immigration-related appointments will be contacted to reschedule or cancel appointments, and we will also be forced to uh, reschedule all citizenship events. Uh, finally, our response times for those writing to us or contacting us by phone will be significantly impacted. Uh, and now I'll focus on the services offered by immigration, refugee, and citizenship that will be impacted as a result of the labor disruption. Uh, we would be at significantly reduced capacity, and clients will experience delays with processing applications across all our immigration streams. At any given time, we're managing over a million applications, and we've been working night and day to reduce the backlog. But unfortunately, this will have an impact on the gains that we've been making to address backlogs in our inventories since the pandemic. Furthermore, delays could be experienced with citizenship services delivered at missions abroad, and clients with immigration-related appointments will be contacted to reschedule or cancel appointments. And we will also be, of course, forced to reschedule all citizenship events. Finally, our response times for those writing to us uh, or contacting us by phone will be significantly impacted. And just as my colleagues before me have mentioned, we are taking every measure possible to minimize the repercussions both here in Canada and abroad. We will continue to monitor the situation and provide services as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, we're going to take every step we can to minimize the impact on real people with very real concerns that could be seriously impacted as a result of any labor disruption. We're going to continue to monitor the situation very closely and ensure we, we provide whatever services are possible to our clients that they can rely on as quickly and as efficiently as possible and to continue to keep the public informed on further impacts that may be observed depending on how uh, the next number of days or weeks play out. I'll be happy to join my colleagues in taking what questions you may have uh, and would reflect the comments made by uh, those who spoke before me uh, that we remain at the table and want to work with uh, the union to find a solution uh, that is fair and uh, minimizes the impact on our productivity. Thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to what questions you may have. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to reassure the colleagues, uh, the ministers will not be leaving at one. We have more time for questions, uh, but we do have a full house. Uh, so just as a reminder, I will be alternating between French and English. Um, uh, one question, one follow-up. And we will be starting with questions in the room. For people on Zoom, uh, please use the raised hand function uh, if to indicate that you have a question. Alors, nous allons procéder. Okay. So we are now going to proceed with questions. We are going to alternate French English, and we'll begin in the room. There, and would our ministers please keep your answers short? Canadian Press. Um, uh, can confuse a little bit about your comment this morning that you were still at the table negotiating. The Prime Minister seemed to suggest you weren't at the table negotiating. The union is saying that they will come back to the table when you put a new offer on the, on, on the table. So I'm just wondering if you can clarify what's going on with the actual negotiations and if a new offer is coming from the government. 
Well, thank you for the question. Uh, they are presently uh, negotiating at the table. Everybody, all the parties are at the table. So are you planning to come back with a new offer? And as my follow-up, uh, I'm just curious when, uh, if you would consider back to work legislation and if, uh, if not immediately, when that would uh, come into play. Um, I will say that, uh, of course, we call upon the PSAC to work with us to reach a deal, an agreement, as quickly as possible. And it's in the interest of the public service and of Canadians, and the bargaining table is the best place where we can reach for a deal. And currently, negotiations are happening and exchanges are happening between both parties. And we will continue to put all efforts in to have those negotiations and to reach a deal. Mylène Crête, La Presse. Mylène Crête, La Presse. Good morning. My question is for you, Madame Fortier. The government has in its plans tab tabling an anti-scab legislation. And, of course, uh, th this would, you know, affect uh, employees who are working from home. Thank you for the question. As you know, at this time, public servants who are in a strike position are following the their union's uh, instructions to picket. As to essential services, public servants are still at work providing those, and we are making every effort to continue to negotiate at the table. But they could disobey their strike vote, in which case you would allow them to continue to work and be paid. At this time, they are not being paid. It's, if it's not an essential service, they are not being paid by the government in that they are in a strike position. Maybe I have not explained things carefully. Those who are on picket lines and are abiding by their union's instructions and are on the picket line are being uh, paid by their union for picketing. Ch Chilean Piper. And these negotiations, um, is the government prepared to let some workers work entirely remotely as the union is hoping for? Thank you for the question. And what I'm going to say at this time is that uh, as uh, we are implementing a modern workplace where employees have the flexibility to work from home two to three days a week, and we have made proposals on telework uh, and other PSAC priorities at the time, and at the same time, we need to ensure that government can deliver uh, services and uh, make sure that our core purpose is to deliver services. Therefore, uh, we will see uh, what continues uh, at the table. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, some workers did work remotely. Did you see a decline in productivity during that time? Is that part of the hesitancy uh, around doing remote work more permanently? I think that uh, we have been from a by necessity uh, to work from home to now uh, delivering services with a hybrid model that is in transformation. Therefore, we're evaluating how to best deliver those services and uh, by bringing forward, uh, l letting some uh, of the public service sub public servants working from home two, three days a week is what we are, are, are presenting at this time. And we will continue to look at how we can transform uh, how we best deliver the services to Canadians, which is our core purpose. Valérie Michaela Baines, Radio Canada. You say that the unionized employees' demands just are not uh, realistic. We're talking about to salaries of 9%. At this time, as you've seen with the third party public interest commission, the recommendation is 9%, and that's the offer on the table now. We know that the Public Service Alliance of Canada has also shared that. We should remember that one year ago, we presented a first demand an economic offer, and PSAC had rejected that. And for the last weeks, we've been in mediation to arrive at a deal that is uh, competitive and fair for public servants and reasonable for Canadians. And we will continue to discuss at the bargaining table. 
in absolute value, what does a public servant earn uh, on average, and how does that compare with what you've offered? There are 150,000 public servants who are at the table where discussions with four groups with different uh, salary uh, levels. So uh, we could call upon the technical team to explain uh, the, the details. Uh, but what is important is we've put in a good offer at the table to, to, uh, that values the work done by public servants. And we continue ha to have the objective that they have a fair and competitive uh, salary that is reasonable for taxpayers. Without getting into numbers, I'm wondering if you can talk about how far apart the two sides are uh, from, from reaching an agreement, and also if you can talk about the tone of negotiations right now. Well, I will say uh, I'm, uh, of course, uh, convinced that we are putting all the efforts together uh, to reach a deal. That's where best deals are made is at the table. And uh, we've been working very hard for the last two weeks in mediation and uh, have the effort to uh, continue that effort to uh, reach uh, a deal. And I will say that uh, as we are negotiating, I, I'm not uh, privy to share uh, where we are in, in gaps or, or whatnot. I think right now the focus is to find compromise and work together. And the Prime Minister said uh, today that um, you put forward an offer on Monday and the union never got back to you. And the union says it did get back to you, made a counter offer. Can you clear that up? What, what, what's going on with that? Well, again, as you know, in uh, negotiations, uh, there's an offer and then there's a counter offer. And that's what we're working on right now. And at the table, there will be many exchanges. Therefore, we focus right now on uh, making sure the parties are, are looking at how these offers will get to one deal. There have been exchanges for the past two weeks, uh, and uh, we will continue to do that. Olivier Ferrand Boissé, TVA. Oui, bonjour. Good afternoon, for Miss Gold. How many times? How long could this strike uh, last before the backlog actually becomes a threat for Canadians that they relive the nightmare they uh, have lived before? Thanks for the question. First, we have learned a great deal uh, in our Canada Services Centres since uh, last year, and we don't expect there to be lineups as we had last year with the passport situation. Now, what we want to do is make sure that for every day that the strike lasts, we, you know, be able to deal with the backlog in the uh, law, if a passport is not deemed urgent, we cannot process it. So it's going to depend on the duration of the strike. But as I mentioned in my remarks, after one week, we're going to have, well, we'll be processing applications that are still in the system, but we, we don't know as of today or, or in the next few days how many new applications we will be receiving. Canadians continu can continue to send in their applications, but the systems can't process those applications. So it will depend on the length of the strike. Well, in your opinion, would three weeks mean, say, 30,000 uh, backlog? And will you have lost uh, uh, what you've caught up on since uh, the uh, last situation? Can we avoid a nightmare? Well, we hope that we will not relive what we lived uh, last year in the Canada service centres. But it could be that there are picket lines drawn up in front of those uh, offices. So uh, managers have ways to ensure that Canadians continue to enter the centres to get services. But as I mentioned in my remarks, we receive about 85,000 applications per week, and we have a capacity to process about 160,000, 200,000 passports. That's a healthy inventory. But if after one week we have a backlog of 85,000 or more, then we'll see. 
Uh, Minister Fortier, I'm trying to understand why your government is resistant to enshrining the right to work from home or to telework, given your previous comments and how well it worked during the pandemic. Why don't you allow those things to be enshrined in a collective agreement? Um, currently, I, I, as I said earlier with another question, we are implementing a hybrid work model to best deliver uh, services, having a modern workplace that gives the flexibility to uh, public servants to work uh, from home two to three days a week. And uh, we have made those proposals uh, uh, on telework and other PSAC priorities during this current negotiation. And at the same time, we want to make sure that we continue to offer services to Canadians. That's our core priority. A follow-up for Minister Gould. Your criteria for what is an essential passport application right now, there are going to be lots of people out there who have holidays planned, travel planned, that don't meet those criteria you've set. What do you say to a family that's going to Disney World next week waiting for their passports? Yeah, Glenn, it's it's a really good question, and unfortunately, it's not something that I, I have set. Uh, it's legislated in law as what um, an urgent or humanitarian passport is considered to be, um, and uh, you know, I, I I feel I feel very terrible for them. Um, you know, I think like all of my colleagues here, uh, we're very hopeful that we're going to come to a negotiated agreement with the Public Service Alliance of Canada expeditiously so that the impact on Canadians um, is minimal. Uh, so I'm, I'm very hopeful that that bargaining will continue because, um, you know, unfortunately, as legislated um, and as outlined with the union, um, if someone has a family vacation planned, it's not considered to be an essential service. And so, you know, I, I really, you know, continue to urge both parties. I mean, the government is there. We've been there since last June. And I hope that the union will continue to be there as well to reach this agreement because ultimately it has an impact on Canadians. Inès Lombardo, Franco Press. Oui, merci. I have a question for you, Madame Fortier. With the Official Languages Action Plan uh, around the corner, a number of Francophone organizations are awaiting funding. What measures will you put in place to avoid any additional delays? As you know, that's a good question. And obviously, the government wants to continue to deliver services, but also all the programs that we want to keep up across the country. So we'll continue to make every effort at the bargaining table to reach a deal so that we can pursue all of our activities and offer those services. A question for Mr. Fraser. You mentioned that there are about one uh, million uh, applications a year. Now, what are the delays for those applying for visas? Um, <coughs> is it all right with you if I answer you in English? Uh, the, it's not one million per year. It's, it's common for us to have uh, more than a million applications in the inventory at any given moment. Um, far more than that come in over the course of a year, uh, and we process them as they come in. So the, the number annually would be uh, would be much higher. Uh, the precise nature of the delays for people who are awaiting uh, visa processing, for example, will depend on the nature of the labor disruption. Um, we do have uh, access to the uh, international network of uh, workers at IRCC who will continue to uh, process uh, what they can with a, a prioritization, of course, on uh, emergency situations where a person's life may, may be threatened. Uh, I do expect that the impact will be uh, severe, uh, depending on the length of any work stoppage. Uh, however, the uh, full scale of the uh, disruption uh, has certain unknown facts uh, that make it difficult to assess with certainty uh, the precise timelines or delays an applicant may face. Ryan Tumulty, National Post. Yeah, Minister Forte, I'm wondering there's some lack of clarity. Uh, PSAC is, is basically telling its members that it's unlikely they will see wage cutbacks during the strike, that there will be clawbacks after the strike, but that during the strike they shouldn't expect to see a reduction in their wages. Is that accurate, or um, should people striking expect that their next paycheck will be less? Well, the ones that will be continue to work in in their positions will continue to be paid. The ones that will be going on that picket line will be uh, given a pay from uh, their union. So they will continue to 
be paid by the union, an amount per day. <laughs> Sorry, PSAC is telling its members, though, that it will, that they're unlikely to see a pay stoppage even while they're on strike and off the job, uh, and that, that won't, a clawback won't happen until after the fact. Uh, can you clarify that? Um, I, will, uh, can I, I will just make sure that I have the right uh, technical information from my uh, colleagues, and I will uh, come back to you if you give me, to make sure that I give you the right information. Thank you. Uh, David Reevely, The Logic. Thank you. Um, Madame Feltier, could you talk a little bit about uh, some of the impacts on trade and goods movement from this? I know frontline CBSA agents are not on strike, but some parts of CBSA are, and they must interact. The uh, Canadian Grain Commission is apparently not doing export certifications, according to your information page. Uh, what are the, the consequences of this strike on those sorts of activities? Well, as we said earlier, there has been, of course, an understanding with uh, prior to the uh, striking activity with the PSAC to identify which would be uh, essential services and which will not be. Therefore, there will be an impact in those services that are not essential, and that is what uh, is happening. So, therefore, there will be some impact on, on this. I'm after something more specific than that. I and mean, clearly there's some impact, but where, what sorts of particular goods will be affected by this? Where will imports or exports be slowed down? I don't have the current specific information, but I think that is a good uh, in question that we can come back to you uh, through a technical uh, brief. Thank you. Okay. Stephanie Levitz, Toronto Star. Hi, I guess my question is for Minister Forte as well. I'm wondering if you can respond to the official opposition that says that the fact that we've gotten to a strike is a measure of incompetence on the part of the federal government not being able to avert something it saw coming for months. Well, again, it's important to say that uh, we need to make sure that public servants are uh, paid fairly and that it's a competitive also um, pay. And that's what we've been uh, concentrating on. A year ago, we tabled our first uh, offer. And since then, uh, we've been trying to uh, make sure that uh, public servants uh, have a wage deal uh, that uh, will be uh, fair and also at the same time reasonable for Canadians. And that's what we're focusing on at this at this time. And then just as my follow-up, if we understand sort of the public service to be the barometer for the private labor market, what's your message to workers more broadly then? That at this time of inflation, they too ought not expect um, wage hikes that match inflationary pressures as they see their own grocery bills and other expenses go up? Well, the thing is, we have put forward a, a deal, uh, a, a, an offer, I would say, that is um, good for uh, public servants and also uh, fair, and also that will make sure that uh, it's reasonable for Canadians. We have a current economy that uh, we see uh, is uh, changing, and uh, we want to make sure, of course, that uh, we follow uh, that economy. And I, as I said earlier in my remarks, I think it's important that we get to this uh, wage offer that will not compromise what other jurisdictions are also working on and, and putting pressure on those jurisdictions and the private sector. So I, uh, I think that we have the right path forward. And uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, work very hard to get to a deal. Thank you very much. We'll now go to questions on Zoom. Uh, a reminder to use the raise hand function uh, to indicate if you do have a question, and I will unmute you. Alors, on va passer aux questions sur Zoom. So we're going to now turn to Zoom questions. Please use your hands up function on Zoom. Emily Bergeron, La Presse, Canadienne. Emily, est-ce que tu avais une question? Emily, did you have a question? Question, on ne t'entend pas présentement. Est-ce que vous m'entendez maintenant? Oui, oui, on, on t'entend. Oui, okay. désolé pour ça. Um, donc, uh, dans vos... I apologize. In your opening remarks, you spent a number of minutes talking about disruptions and delays on uh, service delivery for Canadians. This morning, we heard Mr. Trudeau say Canadians will not be very patient. What do you say to those who are on strike, 
who see here a communication exercise to encourage Canadians to take position in a labor dispute. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for the question. I think it is important to say that it is very important we respect the right to strike and labor actions taken by public servants in Canada. Nonetheless, we need to be honest with Canadians as to what they can expect with this labor action. And, of course, it will have an impact on Canadians day to day, just as we mentioned regarding passports based on legislation. Passports are not deemed to be an essential service, except in the case of humanitarian situations or uh, urgencies. Essential service will continue to be uh, delivered. That's important for Canadians who are getting uh, pensions, uh, employment insurance benefits. They will continue to get payments. And our priority will be to ensure that those who are receiving those benefits get the benefits. And, of course, of Services Canada, only 37% of employees are deemed essential. So there will be impacts, there will be delays, and it is important for us as a government to s ensure that we're doing everything possible to make sure you get services efficiently, but considering the labor dispute, there will be impacts. In follow-up, for Ms. Fortier, we heard your employees say that there was a disagreement on the uh, inflation rates that have been attained and that this it has an influence on the impasse on pay negotiations. So if you cannot agree on inflation rates, does that ogre badly for bargaining? As I said earlier, we are determined to, to reach a deal with a PSAC, one that is fair and competitive, and one that is reasonable for taxpayers. According to the Bank of Canada, inflation, according to the CPI, will continue to go down and reach 3% uh, in mid-year. So we look at that as a thermometer. And the Government of Canada has put in place measures to support Canadian families, measures that uh, are aimed at diminishing the impacts of inflation on those families. And we want to continue to ensure that these targeted measures continue to support families. We are going to continue to work hard at the bargaining table. We have an offer that is fair and equitable. And as we said earlier, we will see how the next day or days uh, allow us to reach a deal. Question, Nujudal-Malise, Canadian Press. Hi, um, this question is for Minister Forte. Um, the Prime Minister earlier this morning had called on Labour to come back to the table. It seems like at some point they left the table and Labour had said that they would come back if the government came back with an offer. So I'd just like some clarity as to what had happened and whether uh, negotiations resumed because the government came back with a new offer or that Labour just chose to come back. So uh, I, I have to say the last two weeks there has been uh, many conversations going from one room to another with mediation and that is what uh, negotiations are and that uh, this morning uh, my understanding is that to, uh, uh, well, the union and the government were at the table uh, working together and that uh, is uh, the same case uh, as we speak. Thank you. Um, and just a quick follow-up. Um, I know the government has said that it respects the right to, to strike, but that it should be a last resort. How long is too long for this to drag out? 
Well, as I said, uh, I hope that this will be um, a, a deal that we can reach as soon as possible and uh, we respect uh, the right of uh, employers to go on strike. I believe that we have an opportunity to work together and uh, get to uh, an agreement and therefore make sure that we all focus on uh, one thing, which is to deliver core services to Canadians. And this ends the press conference. Minister, thank you for your time. Thank you for staying longer. Bonjour.